Hey everyone, so you can pick up a Google Pixel 7 or even a 7 Pro for pretty cheap these days. I just bought mine used off of Facebook Marketplace for 200 bucks here in the US. $200, that is very cheap for what was a flagship phone from I think about two years ago or so. You know, it's two generations old at this point. But mine only has a battery count of 250, cycle count of about 250, which means it is still, uh, hasn't been used all that much. I mean, it's probably not even been used for a year or so. Uh, reason I charged up all the time. Uh, so you can check that out when you're under, under your settings to see what yours is at. If you do buy it from a seller on Marketplace or offer up something like that. Uh, but even if you do not go on offer up or Marketplace, which is what I would recommend checking out first so that we can actually check out the device before you buy it, uh, and you can probably get it cheaper. Even on Amazon, again, prices change all the time on Amazon refurbished. Uh, but you can pick one of these up when I was looking at this one for about 250 bucks refurbished from or renewed as they call it from Amazon and Best Buy was about the same price as well for their refurbished ones. So for around two to $250 for a regular seven, it is a steal of a deal. And if you go for the pro from what one again, when I was looking at them, it was about a hundred dollars more give or take for the pro version, uh, which might be worth it if you want the better camera, a little bit better battery and bigger well, bigger phone in general, uh, along with some other stuff. But again, I paid $200 for this one. And I'll show you guys this one real fast. There are There is no scratches on the screen, like whatsoever. There's really no scratches on this thing whatsoever. It almost looks brand new, except for mine has a couple of little tiny white marks here. I don't know if they're chips or if it's just something got embedded in it. There's a few little chips or things, little white marks there. Uh, there's like four or five of them. That is it. Otherwise, it is in perfect shape. Uh, besides, the visor here does collect dust, and it's kind of crazy how much stuff it collects. Uh, and it also collects fingerprints. But I mean, like the back of this thing, all around this thing, is in basically perfect shape. Again, for $200, it, it is insane. But now let's talk about this device briefly here. Uh, so this is, again, the Google Pixel 7, meaning it has the Tensor G2 processor in it. Uh, it has eight gigabytes of RAM. It has a actually really good camera, but the camera only does, if you're somebody who wants a lot of zoom, it only does zoom into eight times, which is not that good. And when you are zoomed in all the way, it does not really look the best. But if you don't zoom in a whole lot, it actually, this camera is actually really, really good, which of course is what Google phones are known for. Uh, so the camera is really good. Now there is no macro lens on it whatsoever. Uh, which is kind of a shame, but there's no macro lens if you're looking for something with a macro lens. Uh, now, people do complain about the uh, the modem that are in these. They're not the best. It actually uses, I believe it's a Zerno something or other, which is a Samsung brand's modem. It does not use the same type of modem that is in like a Samsung phone, or uh, even a Motorola phone or iPhones. Uh, it uses a worse modem in them, which means your connectivity we're not on Wi-Fi might not be as good. On uh, the few days I've had this, I've had no issues with that. But if you are in a kind of more spotty area uh, for connection, uh, cellular connection, you might have issues with the Pixel. Some people complain about that. Some people say it's not an issue at all. So it's something to note. Uh, another thing to note is the brightness is not the brightest of phones. So even up almost all the way here, this phone is not really all that bright. And compared to other phones like a Samsung S23 or S24 series, those are going to be brighter. Uh, iPhones seem to get brighter. So if you're in very sunny conditions or bright conditions all the time, you're going to have to have your brightness up quite a bit, uh, which will, of course, affect your battery life. Which then brings us to the other point of battery life. It is not the best battery life. Even when these were new, people did complain about the battery. Then as time went on and these got updates, the battery actually seems to have gotten worse according to some people. Again, in my case, this one has not been charged up all that much. It still has a decently new battery in it. Uh, I don't have any issues with the battery life. It's not the best again, but to me as a light user, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's more than enough to get me through the day and then some, but it's something to note. Now I'm not gonna get into any more specifics or anything like that in this video, but I just wanted to let Y'all know that if you guys are looking for a decent phone for a good price, don't mind your phone being used or refurbished from uh, Amazon or Best Buy or whatever, these things are good phones still for cheap. I mean, $200, you're talking, if you were to buy a new phone for $200, you're talking like the Samsung A15, 
uh, you're talking something like a Motorola, like one of the cheap Motorola's, uh, stuff like that. Uh, and this will should be better than what those are, as this was a flagship phone. Uh, again, two hundred bucks, two hundred fifty dollars, steal of a deal. I would highly recommend checking one of these guys out. Yeah, thank you all for watching. Again, I would recommend one. Uh, again, I would recommend it though going and seeing it in person before you purchase it just to make sure it is in good shape. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a good one. I'll see y'all next time. Goodbye.